school, elementary school and high school with Carl Lindy, whose family was from the Lindy group that developed liquid fuels, like the liquid oxygen that was used by NASA in the Apollo program. In 1969, when man first landed on the moon, my friend Carl Lindy in school was proud that their family had contributed to the use of liquid oxygen that had helped human beings land on the moon for the first time. The Lindy Group of Industrial Liquids has been doing wonderful things for humanity, and I'm really proud that my friend Carl Lindy was a good friend of mine growing up, and I can tell stories about how I used to help him with his French homework, and he'd help me with my math homework. He was, of course, gifted in science and math. How um, we used to protect each other, and I used to protect him, for example, from getting beaten up by Joe Marucci, one of the local bullies in the school, and in turn he would share his Swiss cheese sandwiches with me. Uh, how he programmed the computer in the computer club at Dobbs Ferry High School and Middle School in eighth grade so that I would be hooked up with Lisa Lloyd-Jones, one of the most popular girls in the school, um, whose uh, father was the vice president of American Airlines, and here we are at the airport. So a lot of memories when I see the name Carl Lindy, or Lindy, God rest his soul because he's no longer with us. Carl, we're thinking of you. But the Lindy family in no small measure is also helping us to save the world at this point. Here in Germany at Cologne Bonn Airport at the Total Gas Station, one of the offerings here is Wasserstoff, or liquid hydrogen. And you can see cars like this, oh, which are coming to fill up with liquid hydrogen. This is, of course, emissions free. Hydrogen is the most abundant uh, material, the most abundant element in the universe, uh, hard to get out of things. It bonds very strongly to things like oxygen forming water or to carbon forming methane or any of the hydrocarbons. But when Wasserstoff or hydrogen is burned, of course it releases nothing but water as it combines with oxygen. And to see a, a service station here that is serving uh, Wasserstoff or hydrogen and to see that this is the, the future happening right now. There's a little credit card payment thing over there. And, um, and then there's the hydrogen filling station. And I don't know if this gentleman is filling his car with hydrogen yes, or not. Yes, Looks yes, like he yes, is, yes. which would be amazing. Ah, it's a fuel cell powered car, which is of course why it's so quiet and so clean. Mercedes-Benz. A Mercedes-Benz. And so he's gonna put the uh, the Wasserstoff of the hydrogen in, and it's not going to actually combust. It's actually just going to go through an elect electrolytic process where it's going to combine with oxygen going through the proton exchange membrane and produce an electric current, which is about 80 to 90 percent efficient, whereas the Carnot efficiency of combustion is about 30 to 35 percent. So this fuel cell car is one of the most efficient processes. Imagine that you only have to use about 20% of the fuel that you would if you were using combustion of hydrogen. And of course, it's completely, it. completely it's clean. And I think you can see, um, it's a very simple process. It's just like tanking up with gasoline. He just puts the thing in and presses the button and it fills up the car. So there is no combustion going on. A lot of people have concerns about hydrogen because of its explosive quality. But in a car like this, it's not being burnt. There's no spark plugs, there's no, and Jack Nicholson drove across the United States in the 1970s with a car that was converted to run on hydrogen, but that was combustion engine hydrogen. They were burning the hydrogen, and of course, Woody Hastings, a friend of mine, drove across the country in a hydrogen fueled vehicle uh, and told me about that. Uh, but those, again, were traditional car engines, slightly modified to burn hydrogen. Here we have the future of fuel cell powered car that doesn't involve combustion at all. It's just an electrical process, uh, an electrochemical process, uh, using that wonderful uh, NAF ion, that plastic membrane that was developed by DuPont that holds the, holds the uh, electrons back as the protons go through the exchange membrane and the electrons then have to go through a circuit to complete uh, the circuit, and then that powers the car. So fantastic to see here in Germany. Probably one of those most uplifting things we can imagine from uh, our trip here on the very last day as we prepare to fly out to, uh, to California. So fantastic way to go, Germany. That is 
marvelous. So you have to have special cars. Right? Yeah. <clears throat> how many of those stations. So this is the way electric cars would be in the future. Right. It's, it, well, yeah, essentially what you have is you have an electric car powered by a fuel cell that is fed by hydrogen. So rather than having batteries, the hydrogen of office well, is your battery. The hydrogen is the energy carrier that's holding the energy in, and then that energy is released through the fuel cell. So the hydrogen is your battery. It's an electrochemical thing. So yes, this is an electric car. And that's why it was so clean and silent as it came through. There's absolutely no emissions whatsoever. So exciting. Let's just do a, a pullback and see the... Uh, maybe you can, you can zoom in on the thing over here. Snap a picture of that. Over here, we are hydrogen. You can learn more about it.